This is an introduction to the theory of operation of the RV refrigerator. This part of the series will aid in the understanding of the absorption refrigeration protective controller. This is a rear view of a typical recreational vehicle refrigerator. The green is the refrigerant which is inside the cooling unit tubing. The refrigerant consists of three components ammonia, water, and sodium chromate. Heat input from the gas flame drives the refrigeration cycle. Heat enters the boiler. The heat boils the liquid ammonia, separating it from the water and sodium chromate liquid, resulting in a pump effect. The rising ammonia gas transports the water and chromate liquid up the pump tube. At the top of the pump tube, the ammonia gas rises, while the liquid sodium chromate and water descend by the effect of gravity. The liquid water and chromate fill the outer annular tube. Because the liquid water and chromate are depleted of ammonia, this fluid is referred to as the weak solution. The weak solution flows to the absorber coil. We will return to the weak solution and the absorber coil after we complete the ammonia circuit. Returning to the flow of the ammonia gas, the ammonia gas flows to the condenser. Within the condenser, the ammonia gas is cooled and returns to a liquid state. The liquid ammonia passes through the wall of the refrigerator into the evaporator. This is a cutaway side view of a typical RV refrigerator. Once the ammonia enters the evaporator, the liquid ammonia comes into contact with a hydrogen gas atmosphere. This is referred to as the assistant gas. Due to Dalton's law of partial pressures, the liquid ammonia evaporates, absorbing heat from the refrigerated space. The evaporated ammonia gas combines with the hydrogen gas, exiting the refrigerated space through the lower tube of the evaporator. Returning to the rear view, looking at a cutaway of the cooling unit tubing, the hydrogen and ammonia gas exits the evaporator through the outer annular manifold. From the outer annular manifold, the hydrogen and ammonia gas descends to the refrigerant holding tank. From the refrigerant holding tank, the hydrogen and ammonia gas ascends through the absorber coil. Returning to the weak solution, the solution flows from the boiler to the absorber where the weak solution flows down the absorber coils. Ammonia has an affinity for water, therefore the ammonia is absorbed by the weak solution. In other words, the weak solution absorbs the ammonia and reconstitutes the refrigerant. The refrigerant returns to the holding tank maintaining a fresh supply of ammonia for the boiler. Finally, the hydrogen gas returns to the evaporator through the inner manifold tube, completing the assistant gas circuit. The absorption cycle refrigerator has been in existence for approximately 148 years. One of Albert Einstein's patents is for an absorption refrigeration system. The absorption refrigeration system is time tested and has proven to be extremely reliable. Its reliability is due to no moving mechanical parts once the heat source is established. Our family operated a unit for 30 years trouble free. So what is a common cause of failure for these units? Before answering this question in the following movie, let's view the absorption refrigeration cycle in its entirety. This system is simple once understood, but gaining an understanding is not easy. Please feel free to email questions seeking clarification if needed. The gas flame puts heat into the boiler. The result is for the ammonia to boil 
which starts the flow of the refrigerant. At the top of the pump tube, the ammonia gas rises to the condenser, while the weak solution goes down to the absorber coil. The weak solution in the absorber coil reabsorbs the ammonia gas, which reconstitutes the refrigerant so that it may return to the boiler for another cycle. You can see it dripping into the tank right now. Thank you for viewing. Please see the next video in the series. If you need to contact us, here is our email address.